Nehru said, life is like a game of cards. The hand you're dealt is determinism. The way you play it is free will. I thought free will was a matter of perspective and a paradox. Imagine you take a family out to a really fancy restaurant. There's everything on the menu that they could choose from, but each of them chooses the same expensive steak. Was this their free choice? Was it all predestined by fate, God, the stars, or anything else? Pioneering scientist Benjamin Libet came up with the theory that free will was just an illusion. According to him, brain activity preceded every conscious decision. But this was more to do with how our bodies moved than whether we could make decisions with reasons behind them. His theory never really took off. Organised religions set out a structure for a way of life and belief. The perception is that the more organised the religion and the more rules there are to follow, the less choice there is for the people. Many writings are full of rules, and they have situations where curses outweigh the positives. The curses are warnings of the consequences of choosing to disobey God. This is where the paradox comes in. It seems that God is taking away our free will by making us act in a particular way. But, on the other hand, he is giving us the free will to choose what we want by showing us the consequences if we disobey. The important word here is choose. We do get the choice, but we are guided towards the better path. Free will is very precious, and people treasure and fight for it. People of all ages should be able to think for themselves. When children get into arguments with their parents, it is usually because the child wants more freedom than the parent is willing to give, and the parent wants to keep control over the child. Without freedom to disobey, we become just like robots. To feel human, we need to be in a position where we can choose to accept or to reject the choices we're offered, rather than just blindly following without questioning. Parents warn us about the dangers of taking drugs. They tell us about all the terrible things that can happen, but we still have the freedom to make that choice. They trust us to make the correct choice, knowing the consequences of our actions. There are times, though, that we don't always listen, and we have to learn from the consequences. Why do religious books threaten such fire and brimstone just to get people to follow the rules? Why not encourage people to take the right path? It's a bit like parenting. Sometimes it doesn't seem kind at first. Imagine a child playing football by the road and chases the ball into the path of a car that narrowly misses him. A passerby would freeze in shock, once realising no harm had happened, would carry on tutting under their breath. On the other hand, the mother watching her child would have the same initial reaction of freezing in shock, but would then run over and grab and shout at the child for not following her rules. This is because the mother cares, and she wants to shock the child into obeying for the child's own good. This is exactly what God is doing in these curses. So, if we follow the rules and choose the right path, good things should happen to us. And it follows that bad things will happen to bad people. But in the real world, bad things happen to good people. Why is this? And if there is a God, why doesn't he step in and help the people who are following his rules? The reason is because he'd be expected to step in for any situation in the world, no matter how big or how small. Where would he draw the line? If we rely on our belief, saving the day every time something bad happened, we would have no incentive to develop and do things for ourselves. A perfect world is something to aspire to, but would be boring. Life is about striving for improvement, but if there is nothing left to improve, what would we do? There will always be conflict. It is a part of humanity, whether we are adults or children. As I said at the beginning, free will is a matter of perspective and a paradox. Different people have different views on the same subject. It depends on people's beliefs, upbringing, and the society in which they live. A person in North Korea might believe that they have all the free will in the world, but it would appear differently to us in the West. 
The paradox is that the more we think that we have no free will because there are so many rules, we actually have the freedom to accept or to reject those choices with knowledge and understanding. On the other hand, if we think we have complete free will and we can make every choice we like, but if our lives are predetermined, then all those choices have already been made in advance. As Isaac Beshevis Singer said, we must believe in free will. We have no choice. Thank you for listening.